Hello, I'm John Jordan, and welcome to PocketGamer.biz's weekly news digest. Uh, this is for the week ending uh, October the 24th, 2014. Um, so th there has been some, some pretty uh, kind of interesting, big and, and speculative news this week, but uh, before we kind of kind of get on to Unity and what's going on there, um, I kind of thought there was a, another story that, um, in a sense, it's, it's kind of bigger, really, um, even though it's not like, a, like a, a, a news event-related story, but it's... Um, it's a prediction of the of the scale of the mobile games industry, which, even though I've been writing about it for a long time now, was kind of quite surprising for me. So, as as um, probably people know who've been reading my stuff, I'm fairly sceptical about pe um, people who predict um, kind of the future. Um, there's a kind of well-known um, kind of his, kind of a mathematical or, or a kind of a statistical approach to things where you you shouldn't really predict things. You should predict the probability of things happening. So we shouldn't necessarily say. This is going to happen tomorrow, but we could say there's a 50 percent chance it's happening tomorrow. Um, market predictors haven't really got round to this kind of um, kind of way of dealing with things, which is now actually becoming quite pre quite prevalent in stuff like political um, predictions. But um, if you're a, if you're a market uh, analytic firm or a predictions company, you tend to predict the market will be worth x x billion in year 20 x x. Um, so in in this case, there's a company called um, called Newzu who are you know, fairly fairly well regarded. They're not they're not some kind of fly by night kind of company. Um, they do lots of predictions just about the games industry, so they're kind of fairly uh, well kind of clued into what's going on. And early in the year, they did some predictions about um, as, as these companies tend to do. They predicted over a, uh, it was I think a four year period. So they were looking. Um, they had their um, numbers for 2013. Then they predicted 2014, 15, 16, 17. So that's five years, isn't it? And they predicted for five years. Um, and um, it kind of seemed all, all well and good. I mean, they, they were still numbers were still pretty impressive. So they were predicting for 2014 that they kind of thought revenue would be 21.7 billion dollars. You know, that's a kind of large amount of money. Um, but now they've kind of re after six months after they they did their initial estimates for for, for this period, they've actually kind of um, revisited them and actually raised them fairly significantly. So. Um, for 2014, the year that's almost ended, they've gone from 21, uh, 21.7 billion dollars of, of revenue f globally from mobile games. That's 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 um, that's uh, smartphones and tablets, um, and they've increased this to 25 billion dollars. So that's kind of three, what well, I was saying, 3.3 um, .3 billion dollars increase in, in their estimate, which which is, um, and they and they kind of generally say they try and be fairly conservative in their estimates anyway. So a fairly a fairly significant change. Um, and the roll-on effect is actually for now for 2017, they see the mobile games uh, industry global worth as being worth about about 41, just a shy, shy of 41 billion dollars. Now, obviously, that's a bit different. Uh, you can say you can argue in 2014 we've only got really two months to go, so um, <laughs> you're not really predicting very much if 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 if, uh, if 10, 11, uh, 10 twelfths of the year is already done. But um, 2017 is, is obviously a bit of a way off, and we don't we can't really tell what's going to happen. Um, I always kind of find it um, interesting where obviously people uh, tried to predict the size of the of the mobile games industry the year before Apple announced iPad, um, and no one no one predicted iPad. So the fact that they predicted money uh, the scale of this industry of the industry without knowing iPad was going to be meant all their predictions were, were, were absolute rubbish. So in a sense, I'm saying prediction is a bit of a mugs game, um, even though Newzu are, are as good as anyone at doing it. But it, even even if the the, the case of 40, 41 billion dollars doesn't happen, it's still the case that twenty five billion dollars in this year is is absolutely enormous. Really, it's kind of to a degree it's kind of crept up on us a little bit. Um, and I guess we've had these companies like kind of Supercell and and uh, people like um, uh, the uh, I'm trying to think of the name um, <laughs> Gung Ho, the uh, Puzzle and Zombies uh, Puzzle and Zombies that's mixing things up Puzzle and Dragons guys in in Jap Japan. Um, and they had a billion, that's a billion dollar franchise now. Um, so you have, we kind of have these big numbers, um, but I guess sometimes we kind of think, oh, there's a few big companies, there's like King and Supercell and, and, and Gung Ho, who are doing these big billion dollar um, kind of annual revenues. But there's a lot of other kind of companies, maybe we don't think about, who are doing hundreds of millions of dollars now. So it, I guess it all adds up. I guess the, 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 the interesting thing in the long term is, if New Zoo's prediction is correct for 2017, and we hit around $41 billion of, of mobile revenue, that's normally split between Two thirds um, mobile smartphone and a third tablet. That's pretty much what people are predicting th throughout the um, the next kind of four years or so. Um, but if mobile games got to forty one billion dollars, that would actually make them the biggest sector of any game. So bigger than console gaming, bigger than PC gaming. 
Um, and, and the interesting thing, I guess, is mainly that New Zoo is suggesting this is m mobile as an industry is growing via growth. So it's just more people are playing mobile games. There's some, there's some cannibalistic element that people are kind of not playing console games anymore and some of so some of them some of the dollars that would have been spent in console games are now moving into mobile games. But but the majority of, of, of mobile's growth comes from what well, they say organic growth. So again another maybe surprising thing is that New Zealand are saying kind of uh, Western Europe and North America, which are fairly big and fairly but fairly mature markets, it's expecting growth of about kind of forty five, kind of high high thirties, forty five percent in those markets. Obviously in places like China um, they're predicting growth uh, this year of 85%, and that kind of seems to chime with what the Chinese people are saying. The Chinese kind of um, companies are saying they're kind of looking around about 90% growth this year. So I guess I guess the, the bottom line is what we're saying is mobile is very big, bigger than we kind of expected, um, uh, which I guess is good news for for, for all of us really. Um, but so, even so, I say yeah, I was a bit surprised that the, the numbers were coming out kind of kind of that big. Although obviously, as we say, these are all predictions. So it's not actually. Um, Kind of a fact yet. Anyway, so that was a, a bit of kind of long-winded start to the fact that mobile games are very big now. Um, and I guess moving on to the the news that was the news. Um, but was it actually news really? Um, so Unity Technologies, a company that have been um, going for about twelve years now. They started out with a Unity engine that was actually a plug-in engine, like a, a browser, a browser engine for for PC games. Um, and they kind of made a nice little business kind of doing that, and, and they kind of slowly moved into into consoles. Um, and then probably about so I think five five years ago they started they did, started doing iPhone. And basically what they've done now is is, is they have a, a engine technology that pretty much covers any any type of any type of gaming um, platform you would want to write a game for. So from consoles to PC to to mobile um, and, and handheld, um, pretty much everything supported. Okay, I guess a bit more interesting um, the developer's point of view. It's not just an engine, so it has all the sources of the lighting and the, and the AI and the physics and all that kind of stuff. But they're I think what Unity have been very good at, one, they're very cheap, uh, which is good, good for kind of increasing market share. But the thing they've been very good at is actually kind of providing a platform. So they kind of have deployment, they have, have any, uh, a big thing they have is called the asset store. So it's basically dev game developers can create little nodules, nodules, modules <laughs> of code and, and assets and things that kind of plug into Unity. So other de Unity developers can kind of buy kind of bits of code effectively or, or, or kind of subsystems for their games. And that's been pretty successful for them. Um, so the, the kind of the news, and it was, um, I mean, it is big news in the sense that the founder and and the guy who's been CEO of, of Unity um, for their entire career is David Helgerson, um, you know, pretty well-known guy in the industry, very um, kind of charming and, and, and um, uh, but very much like the, the spokesman of the company, as you would be with the CEO. He kind of announced he was stepping, I mean, not really down, He's stepping kind of sideways, so he's going to move to what is now a, a bit of a weird Americanism role, but executive vice president. Um, so he's going to effectively keep doing what he does. But he's, he says he loves talking to developers who are using Unity and finding out what they want and um, and kind of looking at strategy. Um, but the CEO role, which is a kind of the the, the main figurehead role, is going to, he's going to be replaced in that by a guy called John Riccicello. Now he's an industry veteran. He's done um, in his career he's done lots of things. Actually, he started off working for Pepsi Cola and Hagen Dazs, and then went on to work for for um, Wilson Wilson Sporting Goods, who make kind of tennis and golf clubs and all kind of weird stuff. Anyway, he's best known in the games industry for for, work for he he ran EA over two stints as CEO, um, and it's a bit unfortunate for him. And it's I guess it's one of these big kind of conflagration or things that that a company like EA with thousands of staff making um, hundreds of games a year. Anything that went wrong was kind of seen as John Riccicello's kind of fault. Um, he joined EA um, kind of at a difficult time for them. They were moving from 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 retail goods to, to digital goods, um, which is a transition he kind of um, dealt had to deal with. And through that time, they were kind of loss making, and their share price went down. And um, he had to make lots of kind of difficult decisions. Um, some of them maybe he 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 made well. Some of them maybe he didn't make so well. But we kind of had this interesting interesting kind of thing now that John because John Riccicello has taken over from David Helgerson, who's who's basically this kind of like a the kind of a um, I mean the saint of the games industry is, is kind of wrong, but but that kind of like a, a very lauded figure. He's quite quite humble. He's um, come from from Denmark as the company, so kind of quite Scandinavian in his kind of self depreciation. Um, and being replaced by an, an American or seen as an American kind of CEO suit. Um, and so I wouldn't say a lot of people, but a certain number of vociferous people, which tend to be the way on the internet these days, are kind of suggesting that this is the end for Unity and, and, and this, this terrible man who destroyed EA is going to come in and destroy Unity. Um, and so there's been some kind of interesting, I mean, there was just the news was quite a surprise, I think, for most people. Um, and talking to David Helgerson, he said, he said the decision was actually made um, 
pretty pretty quickly. It wasn't it wasn't something they um, John Riccicillo had been on the board for Unity for for a number of years uh, for a number of months uh, about a year and a half I think, um, and so they got to know each other during that time. Um, and I think very quickly David decided that now was the time for him to step down and, and, and John could step up and as soon as they made that decision they kind of announced it and kind of got on with the change. So um, I think people were kind of surprised by, by it happening. The other interesting thing I guess in to give the trend to, to what's happening with Unity is there have been lots of rumours, um, they're a privately owned company, they've had some VC money, not a lot of VC money actually, much less than people kind of expect. But because they've been so successful they've got over um, three million um, developers are using the, their technology. So there's an assumption that they're the industry standard. So they'll either kind of sell out, so some big company will buy them. There's, there's been rumors that people like Amazon um, and Google or Facebook or you know all the usual suspects potentially might have been trying to buy them or been asking how much they cost. Um, and then the other option is, of course, when you get to a certain scale, you can IPO. Um, and because John Riccicello worked at EA, who were a public company, um, that there's kind of this assumption that he's been bought into um, to, to get and Unity ready to IPO. So David Helgen says that's a load of old rubbish. Um, maybe you'd expect him to say that. Um, but um, he, he seems to, he, from his point of view, he kind of says the next big thing for Unity is they know how to make tools, they're pretty good at that. And now they need, need to, they've made developers, made it easier for developers to make games. Now they've got to make it easier for developers to find success with their games. Um, and obviously John Riccicello working at EA, um, working at a, a company that, that is very successful at selling games to consumers. That's kind of one of the things he, he's, he has been brought on to do. So we'll wait and see. I mean, that's a long-term kind of, or a medium-term thing, I guess, but uh, kind of making an interesting week for us with um, speculation and interviews and lots of stuff like that flying around. So anyway, um, I'm sure next week won't be quite so um, fascinating, but there'll, but there'll be one or two things, I'm sure, that you'll want to come back and see how we discuss. So see you next week.